Hello, I'm Ben Wattenberg at the Tokyo Stock Exchange. You know, just a very few years ago, many observers thought that the so-called Japanese economic miracle would leave America in the dust. Today, the situation is starkly different. Since 1990, Japan's economy has stumbled. The recent Asian economic crisis compounds Japan's problems. As we found out on a recent trip, Japan is still a prosperous country with a high standard of living and low unemployment. But the debate here in Tokyo is whether Japan must change in order to avoid the likely fate of its Asian neighbors. This week on Think Tank from Tokyo, whatever happened to Japan Inc? The crisis in Asia sent shockwaves through the world's economy. Think Tank recently traveled to Japan to diagnose the wealthiest patient in Asia's economic sick ward. Many vital signs are still robust. Japan is by far the biggest economy in Asia. Over the past decade, Japanese banks and corporations invested heavily throughout Asia. So when the smaller Asian economies went into financial freefall, all eyes turned to Japan. We interviewed optimists, pessimists, and in the middleists in Tokyo and in Washington to get a sense of what is happening in Japan and how it could influence America. These days, much of Japan looks a lot like the United States. It is a successful and vigorous country with a highly educated and motivated workforce. Americans and Japanese play many of the same games, listen to much of the same music, watch many of the same movies, eat the same fast food. Fashion is universal. While there is much common ground, there is one realm where there are big differences, the economy. The United States leans toward a free market which gives American consumers low prices and American stockholders high returns. The Japanese have a different system. A little background. After World War II, Japan was in ruins, its largest cities and industries destroyed. America helped rebuild its former enemy. Just like in Europe, uh, the United States did provide some much needed capital at a very critical point uh, uh, in the post-war era uh, to get Japan's investment going uh, uh, to revitalize its basic industries. The United States uh, provided markets and technology. Uh, and without the American market, uh, Japan would probably had uh, uh, it would have been impossible for Japan to pursue export uh, led development without access to American technology it would have been very difficult uh, for the Sony's uh, and the Hitachi's uh, to really move up uh, the technological uh, ladder. By 1955 only a decade after the war's end Japan's economy had regained its pre-war strength and with a few bumps continued to grow over the next 30 years. By the 1980s, Japan had become an economic superpower. The world looked in admiration at its unique and very successful way of doing business. The Japanese economic system was anchored by kiretsus, or interlocking alliances of big companies. They worked closely with the government concentrating on manufacturing and exporting. Unlike their American counterparts, typical Japanese workers looked forward to lifetime job security and saved at high rates. With these policies, the Japanese began running enormous trade surpluses. By the 1980s, the Japanese miracle was big news in America. Japanese products filled the U.S. market and Japanese investors, flush with cash, bought prominent American landmarks such as Rockefeller Center and Pebble Beach. 
1989, the value of the Japanese stock market exceeded that of the New York Stock Exchange. Many Americans became convinced that the Japanese had the better economic system. Then in 1990, Japan's bubble burst. Overvalued Japanese stocks and real estate plummeted. Throughout the 1990s, while the American market soared, the Tokyo Stock Exchange went into the tank and stayed there, losing more than half its value. In 1997, economic troubles in Thailand, Hong Kong, South Korea, and Indonesia caused a chain reaction throughout Asia. Japan did not escape. In December of 1997, a major Japanese security firm, Yamaichi, went broke. Japan's banks are now holding billions of dollars in bad debts. On a more positive note, however, Japan still has a robust manufacturing core to its economy.、Uh, I think if you look at the real side of the Japanese economy, there are a lot of strengths. And so I would be the last person to say that、uh, Japan has a bleak economic、uh, future. I mean, the fundamentals are still quite strong.、Uh, Japan has a highly educated, highly motivated、uh, workforce. Uh, there's a lot of savings、uh, to pay for、uh, investments and technological development, and, all for,、uh, and also、uh, to help、uh, pay for the aging uh, society. Uh, and their business,、uh, in the especially the manufacturing sector, is quite robust.、Uh, profit、uh, rates are very high, and, and they're probably, in many sectors, the most competitive uh, uh, in the world. The Japanese have a terrible financial problem that's been brewing for, for most of a decade because their unwillingness to correct certain、uh, distortions in their economy. I think the fundamental productive strength of the Japanese economy is there and will become evident in an export boom you know, this year and, and through the rest of the decade. Change may be on the way in Japan. In December of 1997, President Hashimoto announced a $15 billion tax cut to jumpstart the economy. Japan's central bank lowered interest rates to 1% to keep smaller banks liquid and to restore depositors' confidence. These are short term fixes. There may be more fundamental changes coming. With the freewheeling American economy surging and the more centralized Japanese economy languishing, many Japanese are now convinced that the Americans have the better economic system. There is even talk of moving forward the timetable to deregulate the Japanese economy, the so called Big Bang. Japanese citizens would be more free to invest abroad. The government would play a smaller role in managing the economy. Companies would be free to adopt leaner, Western style, more efficient business practices. There is change. In fact, there is change a la American style. If you will, at the major Japanese companies. It's slow, but it is happening. Their lifetime employment is not, always, is not a guarantee for everyone. It may be a guarantee for the majority of the, the、uh, new recruits who come into the company, but not for everybody.、Uh, and we also are beginning to see not only uh, uh, lifetime employment eroding away, but also、uh, the system of seniority in which everybody、uh, at the same level moves up. Into the next level, lockstep. I mean, they all get a promotion. That also is beginning to erode. But change does not come easily to Japan. There's a lot of talk about deregulation in Japan, and、uh, there is a lot of interest in deregulation, but the focus of deregulation in Japan is on how to make Japanese companies more internationally competitive. And、um, they obviously want to be able to make the companies competitive, but at the same time, Want to avoid as much as possible dislocations in the economy, whether it's、uh, companies going bankrupt or whether it's people becoming unemployed. If Japan succumbs to the Asian flu, America's long economic boom could be jeopardized. American companies doing business in Japan would find fewer customers for their products, whether it's film or clothes or fast food or computer chips. In fact, in January, chip manufacturer Intel announced a significant drop in Asian sales. If the Japanese financial system really cratered, that would have real, that would have effects on every part of the world economy because of the linkage of financial systems now. Money would, if, 
if value is evaporating in the Japanese stock market, it's going to be sucked out of other places. Uh, even though Japan runs a big trade surplus with us, still it's a market for certain of our important goods. So it would be bad for everybody if Japan collapsed, and we hope that doesn't happen. So does Japan need to change? And if so, what does it have to do? In Tokyo, we talked with two leading Japan watchers with very different opinions. Eamon Fingleton is author of Blindside, why Japan is still on track to overtake the U.S. by the year 2000. Yoichi Funabashi writes for the respected Japanese newspaper, the Asahi Shimbun. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. The word that you hear most often in America about the Japanese economy is languishing. Is that what's happening here? No, I disagree totally. I think the Japanese economy is doing better in the 1990s than it did in the 1980s. I think that uh, if you look back to the 1980s, Japan was then described as an economic juggernaut. And there were two main reasons for miracle. that. Miracle. Economic miracle juggernaut. Right. Right. But it became to be perceived as more than just a, a miracle. It was right. a challenger to the United States. There were two main reasons for that. The current account surpluses and the uh, rise in J Japanese incomes, uh, incomes going up the uh, World League table all the time. Now, if you look at how Japan has done in the 1990s on both these criteria, Japan is still very much a juggernaut, juggernaut bigger than ever. Um, the surpluses for the first seven years of the 1990s totaled $655 billion. That compares with $192 billion for the first seven years of the 1980s, so three and a half times greater. Um, on the income side, if you measure in dollars and you measure at current exchange rates, you find that uh, Japan is now $36,500 per head per capita income um, as of 1996, compared to $28,500 for the United States at current exchange rates. Okay. Uh, the Japan's manufacturing sector is still in good shape. Uh, the problem Japan faces is financial side. That the fi financial fabric is really now in disarray. And uh, uh, also, the Japan's uh, heavy-handed uh, bureaucratic control over the economy and the markets now really start to have started to stifle the Japan's uh, real market uh, and also uh, uh, the resourcefulness uh, being reached out. In terms of the standard of living of the average Japanese and the potential threats over his or her head, isn't the situation of Japan today worse than it was seven or eight years ago? Well, the Japanese still uh, <clears throat> uh, do not see their income being depreciated uh, so noticeably. They still have money. But uh, once they face this uh, uh, the bad news always, all the time, they uh, really start to uh, tighten their belt and they do not spend that much. And that uh, already has had a chilling effect on the personal consumption side, particularly. And now they are hearing this, uh, you know, the uh, old Asian cu uh, currencies being depreciated so dramatically and now uh, shifting that, uh, the focus on uh, the Hong Kong dollar, and uh, then the Japanese banks again are, are very much exposed. Japan, after the bubble, after those banks got in trouble, they said, oh good, we'll invest in Southeast Asia, we'll invest in uh, Vietnam and Indonesia and Malaysia and all those places, and China. And now they're all taking a hit, which means your banks but take a hit. The, the, the reading is entirely the opposite. They invested in these markets, right? Yeah. And the currencies in these markets have now gone down. That means their labor costs and their subsidiaries overseas have gone down. These subsidiaries are uh, exporting to the United States and Europe. Japan is exporting the uh, components from here to these factories. They put them together in these factories at low wages, lower wages now than a year ago. And uh, then they're going into Europe. Yeah, and but th there is some time gap, uh, you know, uh, uh, time gap around here. Uh, the, the, those bearing fruit side, uh, the, those uh, positive results will come later. But uh, immediately, the, the, the Japanese banks is again overexposed. The banks' problems is something we can debate all night, but they are largely irrelevant to the to the main point here, which is Japan's capital exports. Japan's capital exports are not affected by. Uh, whether the banks are in great shape or not. 
and Japan's capital exports have continued at an amazing rate, which is uh, a function of the current account surpluses. With, with what does a capital export mean? It means a, a uh, bank. I mean, what what are we talking about? Just uh, it means some of our viewers are as ignorant as I am. So let's say uh, right. It, it means, for instance, buying uh, US, U.S. Treasury US bonds. Treasury bonds yes. It means buy, uh, building factories uh, anywhere in the world. It means buying uh, equities and companies anywhere in the world. But mainly, it's direct investment and uh, U.S. Treasury bonds. Yeah, but I'm more worried about the capital flight uh, from Japan to, uh, say, New York and wherever it is in the coming years after Japan particularly uh, will uh, start that big ban. In which that the Japan, you know, the, uh, the people is allowed to uh, uh, invest more freely. Okay. Now, yeah. now he said the magic words: the Big Bang. The Big Bang, uh, which normally you think of as something that will happen like that, is, is as I understand it in Japan, is sort of a ten-year Big Bang, a gradual Big Bang, as is the Japanese want, but that it would rest re allegedly restructure uh, a. a um, rigid sort of an economy into a more flexible American style market entrepreneurial economy. Now, is that happening? You, you, you say that is It happening. has not happened yet, but it, it will come. A and, it, and it must come, should come, I because think so. Japan yes. will be economically weak. Exactly, it, and right. if Japan really is determined to be competitive in the, fi the global financial markets, they have to open that market and they have to uh, uh, really uh, re restructure it. Now, y y you don't agree with that? Uh, I don't agree. I think, first of all, the big bang will be much less big than people uh, imagine. Small bang. Yeah. Uh, I think that, oh. yeah. <laughs> We're going to see uh, some um, headline stuff. We'll see uh, some of the American brokerage firms and some of the European brokerage firms perhaps taking a more central role in Tokyo. Um, but that is not the same as, uh, well, you know, this talk about vast capital uh, outflows that uh, will uh, supposedly sink Japan again. Uh, it's not going to happen. No, but but, but, but the, it's been described to me that there are really sort of two economies here. There is the economy of uh, Toyota and Honda and Sony, these great multinational companies that are clearly um, uh, expanding overseas breaking ties with the Japanese establishment because they have to uh, have to play globally. No, not true. No. Um, these, these companies depend on this financial market for their money. This is a regulated financial market and it's regulated precisely for this reason. So that the authorities here control who gets the money. So these uh, companies look uh, like independent Western style companies, but they're answerable to the financial authorities here. So when they send jobs abroad, it's only because they have uh, better jobs for the people here. And if you look at the numbers all the time, that's exactly what's been happening. Uh, Matsushita, Sony, uh, Hitachi, companies like that, uh, they have created many, many jobs abroad, but they have not shut down jobs at home. It's, it's a myth. Well, they haven't shut down jobs at home, but you walk around the streets here, and I mean, it's a very elegant country. I, I'm really mu much impressed, I must say. On the other hand, I, I see scenes that remind me of Moscow when there was a Soviet Union with these old women with the little twig brooms. I mean, you see, you, you, you see, uh, we, we were out in the plaza of the Great Palace yesterday morning. There was no one there except two policemen on bicycles going around and around and around. We saw four people on the street uh, directing cars into their parking lot, running around. I mean, in, in the United States, those jobs, those seven or eight jobs would be zero. Mm. I mean, so you say, well, we have full employment, but it, it, that's not Western style full employment. That's, that's phony baloney, isn't it? But here's a question for you. Who is making Japan's exports? Japan's exports are soaring again. Uh, J Japan uh, doesn't have all of its people wasting their time doing nothing. Uh, believe me, most people who are employable are employed and doing something worthwhile. Um, the marginal people may be in marginal jobs, jobs that don't contribute very much, but that's better than having a crime problem. Let me get back to that uh, capital, what I would call capital flight. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> again, uh, you cannot underestimate that the deep frustration and dissatisfaction on the part of the Japanese public, the consumers, uh, wage earners, 
uh, with that very extreme, surrealistically low interest rate. Uh, the, you know, the, we, are, we have a lot of pensioners now in Japan. We are now the most rapidly aging society in the world. And they are deeply concerned about their uh, asset being eroded, uh, their money in the banking account. Uh, what is the interest Not general. Interest rate is 0.28% for, uh, right, for uh, account. Uh, and even if it's a one-year fixed rate, uh, saving rate, uh, it's about uh, a little bit more than 1% or so. So it's no wonder for... Why, why, why don't they send it to the United States where they can That's the point that I really wanted to make. You know, if you go to the Citibank branches uh, throughout Japan, uh, Tokyo and Yokohama, uh, full of people, uh, they are all inquiring about you know, what the best way to uh, save their money. Because they are so... Uh, 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 limited. There are so limited number of the financial instruments available for the average citizens to uh, gener generate that interest in this country. So I think that once that op the market would open, uh, even if it's a, uh, what he called a small ban, I think that uh, that will lead to that the average of Japan money, which has been contained by containment policy imposed by the Ministry of Finance. You've been saying that uh, there's a big threat of uh, capital outflows uh, next year when we have uh, supposedly full deregulation. I question whether we're going to see full de deregulation, but uh, the basic point uh, I would like to emphasize is that all the time we're hearing uh, stories about disaster just ahead for Japan. In the early 1990s, they were saying lifetime employment is breaking down. They were saying the k system is breaking down. They were saying... Kiretsu is this interlocking corporations, right? Inter interlocking corporations. Uh, the cartel system was going to break down. Uh, then we had the Aum Shinri-kyo terrorist attack in, uh, in Tokyo. People said the fabric of Japanese society is breaking down. Uh, then they said uh, the Ministry of Finance, which is the top ministry in, in Japan, was going to be broken up. Um, all these things are in the future, uh, big, big events, and then when we get there, nothing happens. They said the uh, economy was going to be hollowed out. Well, the exports are booming. Uh, supposedly, we were going to see all the Japanese companies investing abroad and shutting down here so there'd be no more exports. Exports are hitting records all the time. You, you uh, seem, uh, seem to uh, underestimate that the, the em enormous uh, enormity of the problem that Japan confronts in macro or macroeconomic level. Uh, that Japan's macroeconomic picture is really uh, in a serious situation. Uh, it's bleak uh, that Japan is now one of the highest debt country in the world. Highest debt. Debt country. And, uh, and Japan's financial institution and uh, disarray. And uh, I think that we will go through a lot of uh, 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 the retrenchment of that uh, the financial system over the next decade or so. Uh, you, you cannot just focus too much narrowly on that uh, trade and manufacturing competi uh, the competitiveness. Uh, Japan uh, is in deep trouble, and I do not think that the uh, uh, yen uh, da uh, exchange rate uh, will uh, be you know the. In, it will be the priority number one problem. Uh, I don't think that, I do not think that the U.S. Uh, will, you know, the Dow uh, will crash over the next one, two years. Instead, I think that it will remain to be in a robust. The, even uh, if, the American stock. American stock, right. yes. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and so uh, taking over the United States, uh, it's, it's a history. It's 1980s argument. No. Um, Yoichi, you're saying that uh, uh, um, uh, Japan has uh, the highest debt in the world. Who does One of the highest, yes. Who does Japan owe its money to? It owes its money to Japan. Japan is the biggest saver in the world. It accounts for 30% of all the world's savings, new savings each year. Japan, to the extent that there is government debt here, it's owed to Japanese citizens. To the extent that other countries have government debt, they owe it to Japan or East Asia generally. Uh, that's the difference. There is a huge geopolitical difference uh, in the two situations. Uh, Yoichi Funabashi and Eamon Fingleton, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And thank you. For Think Tank, I'm Ben Wattenberg. We at Think Tank depend on your views to make our show better. Please send your questions and comments to New River Media, 1150 17th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20036.
or email us at thinktank at pbs.org. To learn more about Think Tank, visit PBS online at www.pbs.org. And please let us know where you watch Think Tank. This has been a production of BJW Incorporated in association with New River Media, which are solely responsible for its content.